Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless are we about to see bible prophecy fulfilled the bible speaks of a seven-year confirmed covenant with israel as we read in daniel 9 27 then he the antichrist shall confirm a covenant with many who is israel the palestinians and possibly other muslim nations for one week which is seven years but in the middle of the week three and a half years he the antichrist shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering, and on the wing of abomination shall be one who makes desolate, even unto the consummation which is determined is poured out on the desolate. When the Antichrist confirms the covenant with Israel for seven years, two things will be made known. The identity of the Antichrist and the seven-year tribulation just started. We begin this half hour with an attempt at what could be a huge development in the Middle East. White House talks are set to begin this week on a deal in which Saudi Arabia and Israel would normalize relations. Under the proposal, the Saudis would recognize Israel in exchange for Israeli support for a Palestinian state and other concessions. But there are some major obstacles in the way of any agreement. CBN's Dale Hurd is on this story. Top Israeli officials are set to hold meetings at the White House after the U.S. and Saudi Arabia reportedly agreed to a broad outline for a deal in which Saudi Arabia would recognize Israel. But the Saudis are asking a lot, not only for Israeli help in the creation of an independent Palestinian state, but U.S. security guarantees and help creating a civilian nuclear program. White House National Security Council spokesman John Kirby, speaking off camera in a virtual press briefing, said a deal is not close at hand. Quite frankly, just to, to be uh, blunt here, I think the, the reporting has left some people with the impression that uh, that discussions are farther along uh, and closer to some sense of certainty than they actually are. But former Israeli ambassador to the U.N. Danny Danone says he believes Saudi Arabia is likely to join the Abraham Accords and normalize ties with Israel within the next year, while former U.S. ambassador to Israel Martin Indyk compared the complexity of the deal to a Rubik's Cube. This three-way deal which is what it would be between Israel, the United States, and Saudi Arabia if it comes about. It's kind of like a Rubik's Cube. There's so many moving pieces uh, that have to be put into place in an intricate uh, diplomatic uh, dance. Dr. Ariel Cohen of the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Center said all the demands made by the Saudis will make a deal difficult. The Saudis, the prince, he wanted nuclear technology with very few strings attached uh, to be provided to Saudi Arabia, enrichment uh, of uranium. Uh, he wanted an ironclad guarantee that if Saudi Arabia is attacked by Iran, the United States will step in and go to war for the kingdom. Israeli opposition leader Yair Lapid has told U.S. lawmakers he opposes any normalization agreement, but Indyk says a deal is a high priority for all three governments. There is a a sense of urgency. And what's important about this is not only that the sense of urgency appears to be matched by uh, Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, but of course it's matched by Prime Minister Netanyahu, which for him is one of his most important foreign policy priorities now. He can taste the possibility of peace between Israel and Saudi Arabia. The White House wants to complete the deal before the presidential election season heats up. After watching this video, it seems as though we are on the verge of fulfilling Daniel 9.27. There has never been a stronger push for peace in the Middle East than we are seeing right now. I believe that very soon the Antichrist will step onto the world stage and strongly enforce peace between Israel and the rest of the Muslim world. And with it will come the rapture of the church. Daniel 9.26 and 27 And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with a flood, until the end of the war desolations are determined. Then he, the Antichrist, shall confirm a covenant with many, 
who is Israel, the Palestinians, and possibly other Muslim nations, for one week, which is seven years. But in the middle of the week, three and a half years, he, the Antichrist, shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wings of abominations shall be one who makes desolate, even unto the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. In Bible prophecy, we are told in Daniel 9, 26 and 27, the prince who is to come, who is the Antichrist, will come on the world scene and strongly confirm a seven-year covenant of peace in the Middle East between Israel and her enemies. This covenant will kick off the seven-year tribulation. We see the prophesied Antichrist right onto the world stage in Revelation 6-2. Immediately following the rider of the white horse beginning his conquest of the world, we see peace will be taken from the earth when the rider of the red horse of war begins his ride across the earth as we read in Revelation 6, 3 and 4. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see, another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another, and there was given to him a great sword. Those who are here to see this will be as those who lived in the days of Noah. All will be well and life will be moving forward as normal when suddenly a flood of God's judgment will begin to fall on mankind which will last for seven years, the culmination of which will be the visible, physical, bodily return of Jesus Christ to the earth at Armageddon. So as we look at what prophecy predicts is going to occur, potentially in the not too distant future, the world is someday going to rejoice that peace has finally come to the Middle East. What will follow that, however, will be anything but peace as the world is suddenly going to explode into warfare. All those who believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior will not be here to see the terrible time to come wherein God's judgment will fall upon a world that has forgotten Him. Where will we be? In the presence of Jesus Christ our Lord as a result of the rapture of the church. And there will be no announcement as to when that will take place whatsoever prior to it occurring. And if you find yourself here after it occurs, your future is going to be horrific. The stage is being set for Daniel's prophecy concerning the arrival of the Antichrist which will be preceded by the rapture of the church. The only conclusion one can draw from all this is this. Jesus Christ is coming soon. Consider this a heads up if you're a Christian, and be forewarned if you're a non-believer. If you're watching this and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's time to get to know Him, and the sooner the better. If you think this world is going to get better, or if you think there's going to be world peace, if you are waiting for utopia, then you will be disappointed big time. As we are hurling toward Armageddon. The Bible says that there will appear a character on the world stage, an individual known as the man of lawlessness. He will make false promises of world peace, harmony, and hope. He will lull the world into believing in him even worshiping him as their Messiah. But he will end up abusing humanity like they have never been tormented before. Christians know him as the Antichrist. After a brief temporary success, he will be defeated and destroyed by our coming King Jesus Christ, our true Savior. Just as he promised, Jesus will return to judge the living and the dead and take his true followers to heaven. He is coming for us and it won't be long. He could come in the next minute or the next week or the next year. He is coming soon. Are you ready? In the last days, the prophet Zechariah tells us Israel will be the focal point of world conflict and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, 2 and 3 Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. 
This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. The recent deal between the United States and Iran to recover some U.S. citizens has been described as the highest ransom ever paid for American hostages. That's because Iran will get $6 billion in frozen assets and prisoners in exchange for five American detainees. CBN Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl brings us the story from Jerusalem. The U.S. State Department maintains those assets held in South Korea can only be used for humanitarian purposes, and Iran will still be held accountable for human rights abuses, funding terrorism, and destabilizing the region. Nothing about our overall approach to Iran has changed. We continue to pursue a strategy of deterrence, of pressure, and diplomacy. We remain committed to ensuring that Iran never acquires a nuclear weapon. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu released a statement focused on the country's main concern, Iran's nuclear ambition. Israel's position is known, according to which arrangements that do not dismantle Iran's nuclear infrastructure will not stop its nuclear program and will only provide it with funds that will go to terrorist elements sponsored by Iran. Certain international experts don't blame Israel for its stand on the Iranian deal. They're one of the lead funders of terrorism around the world. And they're a major opponent to key allies of ours like Israel and Saudi Arabia. Former U.S. Senator and Ambassador Sam Brownback tells CBN News he would understand any Israeli anger over the U.S. allowing billions of dollars to go to its erstwhile enemy. If I'm Israel, if I'm Saudi Arabia, I'm livid about this. Uh, and Israel's trying to limit Iran from getting a nuclear reactor and a nuclear weapon for obvious reasons. And this just helps fund those efforts. Richard Goldberg of the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies says the U.S. has clearly agreed to provide sanctions relief in return for almost nothing. Iran is not required to get rid of its enriched uranium stockpile. Iran is not required to dismantle a single centrifuge, shut down a single nuclear site. To the contrary, they continue to build up their nuclear capabilities under this arrangement, and they are building a secret underground site. Goldberg says that site would likely withstand a military strike and eventually help complete its nuclear weapons ambition. The Israelis are now faced with some pretty tough decisions of actions that they're going to need to take on their own without U.S. support to potentially have to destroy Iran's nuclear capabilities, especially that underground site that, if it's completed, would be game over from an attempt to stop an Iranian nuclear weapon. As the world's leading state sponsor of terrorism, Iran continues to focus on attacking Israel on all sides through Hezbollah, Islamic Jihad and Hamas. Not to mention all the threats that Iran poses to the state of Israel, the existence to Israel, their terror proxies that attack Israel every day. Zechariah goes on to tell us that God will use the Israeli defense forces to destroy the Muslim nations that seek their destruction. In that day, I will make the governors of Judah like a firepan in the woodpile, and like a fiery torch in the sheaves. They shall devour all the surrounding peoples on the right hand and on the left. But Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, Jerusalem. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For a nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. The prophets of the Old Testament prophesied of these future military conflicts in Isaiah 17:1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. 
Jesus prophesied of future plagues associated with the last days, as we read in Luke 21.11. And there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. New concerns tonight about a rare but extremely dangerous flesh-eating bacteria. At least five people have died in Florida and three others in Connecticut and New York. What researchers are saying about a possible link to climate change? It lurks in warm waters and raw shellfish. And tonight, officials are sounding the alarm about Vibrio vulnificus, a flesh-eating bacteria that's killed five people in Florida and three in New York and Connecticut so far this year. According to researchers, the Northeast cases may be linked to warmer waters due to climate change. It's been coming up the northeastern seaboard, probably because of warming of the Gulf Stream and, as a consequence, of climate change, global warming. Symptoms of Vibrio include nausea, vomiting, upset stomach, cramps, and fever. It's rare, but when it occurs, it's serious. The state of Florida has had 26 confirmed cases of Vibrio vulnificus so far this year, five of them resulting in death. And in Connecticut, officials say three patients became infected since July. Two had open wounds and went into the Long Island Sound. The third ate raw oysters from an out-of-state establishment. Romans chapter 1 is a description of ungodly, unrighteous, foolish men and their attempt to rationalize away evidence of the true God. It perfectly describes the writings of Charles Darwin in The Evolution Lie. The climate change cultists have exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator. These foolish men deify Mother Earth for the sake of ecological purity. Climate change is being used to destroy national sovereignty and autonomy in order to bring in a one world government headed by the Antichrist. A deadly epidemic compounded by one of the African continent's worst displacement crises. With more than 30,000 cases reported across the country, the DRC is facing its biggest outbreak of cholera since 2017. According to the Ministry of Health, in the hardest hit province of North Kivu, over 21,000 confirmed or suspected cases have been recorded, including more than 8,000 children under the age of five. UNICEF is sounding the alarm. If urgent action is not taken within the next months, there is a significant risk that the disease will spread to parts of the country that have not been affected for many years. There is also the danger it will continue to spread in displacement sites where systems are already overwhelmed and the population, especially children, is highly vulnerable to illness and potentially death. Internally displaced persons camps are generally overcrowded and overloaded, making them ideal for cholera transmission. Families living in IDP camps across the provincial capital Goma face massive water and sanitation shortages. When we first arrived at this site for displaced people, we had to fetch water from the lake. It was a long distance and the water was very dirty, with no aqua tabs to purify it. In the Bulengo camp, the doctors work tirelessly to treat their patients. Since this service was set up, we've received 2,359 cases, of which 2,349 were cured and 10 have died. According to the Congolese authorities, between 62 and 99 percent of households affected by cholera in North Kivu were families who had been displaced this year. At least three people in Romania have died from the West Nile virus an illness spread by mosquitoes and for which there's no vaccine or antiviral treatment. More than 10 percent of the country's mosquitoes carry the virus, according to a recent study. Eight out of 10 people infected with the virus will show no symptoms. But in rare cases, it can cause a serious infection of the nervous system, leading to paralysis, convulsions, or loss of vision. Vulnerable people are advised to cover their body while outside to avoid being bitten and to use anti-mosquito sprays. First, let's get to our top story. That extreme weather across the West, including Hillary, that historic storm bringing intense winds, torrential rains after it crashed ashore as a tropical storm. California declaring a state of emergency, flooding even impacting Las Vegas. Amid that raging storm, get this, parts of the region were rocked by a 5.1 magnitude earthquake. Hillary slamming the Southwest, officials calling the drenching and dangerous event a once-in-a-lifetime storm. 
as heavy bands of rain barreled towards Southern California, the National Hurricane Center warned of catastrophic and life-threatening flooding. Overnight mudslides forcing cars off the road and bringing traffic to a total standstill on I-10 near Palm Springs. The storms so severe there, the city announced overnight its 911 phone lines were down. And in Forest Falls, firefighters trapped after a mudslide cut off roads around their station. Around Los Angeles, a double dose of Mother Nature's power as a 5.1 magnitude earthquake rattled Ventura and LA counties. Yeah, I felt something. The state's Office of Emergency Services issuing tropical storm, earthquake and tornado warnings all within an hour of each other. Hillary now the first tropical storm to hit Southern California in nearly three decades. Toppling trees, submerging cars and triggering landslides. The massive system drenching the mountains and deserts, even flooding this emergency room in Rancho Mirage. Experts say the area's terrain make these downpours more dangerous and potentially more deadly. Residents in high-risk areas urged to evacuate, but some choosing to hunker down. Why are you staying? Because we always stay. We wrote, we wrote every one of them out, even the fires, right to the door every time. The storm, once a Category 4 hurricane, first made landfall in Mexico, where treacherous flash floods turned roads into raging rivers. Mexican authorities say one person died after their car was swept away just north of Santa Rosalia. Now as California deals with the deluge, Hillary's fury is moving north. And just as California braces for the storm, these lights swaying as Los Angeles was hit with a 5.1 magnitude earthquake. Chief, I'm really sorry to interrupt you right now. Uh, our, are... our studio is shaking right now, so not only are we dealing with a tropical storm, but it appears we are now dealing with an earthquake. This is the first time we've had a magnitude 5 since 1932 in exactly this location. There were no reports of any damage or injuries from the quake, and experts say it is not related to the severe weather. Psalm 18.7, then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken because he was angry. Psalm 9.17, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Well, from Hawaii to the south and the Pacific Northwest, wildfires are burning all across the U.S. Now in Washington, deadly fires have scorched more than 20,000 acres, forcing thousands of people from their homes, now even shutting down a major highway. Oh, my God. Wildfires in Washington state torching more than 35,000 acres and killing at least two as thousands more rush to evacuate. Hundreds of firefighters from multiple agencies fight the flames. Two wildfires, the Gray Fire and the Oregon Road Fire, responsible for nearly 20,000 scorched acres alone. Some residents returning home only to find ashes. In 15 to 20 minutes, it went from, I think that they've got this handled, I'm sure that they can, to we got to go right now. Others staying at evacuation centers. Many at these centers are from the town of Medical Lake. It's 5,000 residents given mandatory evacuation orders. Some officials say only had 20 minutes to run for their lives. We are fighting an uncontrollable problem, which is that climate change is changing the nature of our forests and our grasslands. The state's public land commissioner took us on a tour of the destruction in that community. We've got a makeshift shelter uh, 20 miles or 20 minutes outside of here, and folks there have a lot of questions. We don't know when it will be safe for them back, and that is very scary and frightening for somebody who had to flee their home. The deadliest American wildfire in more than a century. 114 people are now confirmed dead, more than 1,000 people still missing. Workers have scoured some 85% of the disaster area in Lahaina, and according to the governor, the remaining 15% could take weeks, and this, as an approaching storm threatens to make those efforts even more complicated. Fears of permanent displacement are growing among survivors of the Lahaina fire. We had a housing crisis before this fire. This took it to another level. FEMA says it has approved more than five and a half million dollars in aid for 2,000 households so far, promising each will receive an initial one-time payment of $700 for critical aid assistance. 
But with the sky-high cost of living in Hawaii, the Morales family who lost their home say that critical aid isn't nearly enough and they still haven't been able to access it. The Lahaina fire was one of four that broke out on the island of Maui earlier this month, destroying thousands of homes. Tonight, officials fear rain from Tropical Storm Fernanda could bring dangerous mudslides to part of the island, worsening a growing humanitarian disaster on the ground. There's an airport right off the road. Why isn't that being used? There's an ocean front 20 feet from our lobby. Why are we not using that? More than 1,000 people remain unaccounted for, and the governor says that because of the high heat at which the fires burned, along with all other complications of the search, some remains, Jerica, may never be recovered. The fire in South Jersey that's tripled in size just within the last 24 hours. Yeah, here's a look at it, and fire officials tell Action News the Dragway wildfire in the Wharton State Forest has now burned more than 600 acres, and it's just 10% contained. Crews in New Jersey are working to contain a wildfire in Camden, and Burlington counties. They say 600 acres have burned so far and that the fire is 10% contained. We'll be here for a few days looking at the extended fire weather forecast. There's very little precipitation in the near future. Officials say the Dragway wildfire has impacted Wharton State Forest and Jackson Road in Waterford Township. And giving you another live look right now from Chopper 6 from above as crews continue to work to contain this wildfire. There are two key prophecies concerning Jesus' signs of his coming and the end of the age that are crucial to discerning that we are living in the last days. The first prophecy is found in Matthew 24, 8. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. This is how end time signs such as wars, famines, pestilences, and earthquakes will occur. They will become more frequent and more intense as we get closer to Jesus' return. The second prophecy is in Luke 21, 28. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Notice Jesus said when these things begin to happen. Jesus was saying that when you see a convergence of Bible prophecy, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. We are witnessing not only the convergence of Bible prophecy around the world, we are experiencing the frequency and intensity of these prophetic events as well. Paradise in North America. But in the past few days, parts of Canada's Lake Okanagan have become an inferno. Even some boats weren't spared the flames as huge plumes of smoke carried embers from one bank to the other. This man tried to save what he still could. He was luckier than his neighbors, whose homes were devoured by the blaze. The fire chief for the area called the situation unprecedented and said his department had faced some of their most difficult days ever, but that milder conditions on Sunday had allowed them to make some progress. But they're not out of the woods yet. At night, firefighters are unable to use helicopters and are forced to look on as the flames ravage the ancient forest. As the fires encircled some neighborhoods of Kelowna, some 35,000 people were evacuated across the province while 30,000 more have been told to be prepared to leave. Authorities have also ordered tourists to avoid the whole region of Kelowna so as not to block roads. Canada is experiencing its worst ever wildfire season. An area roughly the size of Greece has already burned over the last four months, almost twice the area of the previous record. Authorities in Turkey evacuated another five villages near the northeastern border with Turkey on Sunday. Strong winds whipped up the flames and civil protection authorities warned of an extreme fire risk on Monday in the region around the capital Athens and other parts of southern Greece. Heat waves have continued to hit areas of southern Europe, including eastern France, with experts suggesting the frequency of unusually late high temperatures are down to global warming. Temperatures are predicted to persist all week. On the Spanish holiday island of Tenerife and the Canary Islands, firefighters have been battling wildfires for six days. More than 12,800 hectares of forest and scrub have burned in a 90 square kilometer part of the island. The authorities in Tenerife believe the worst is over, but accept the flames are not fully under control. Luke 21, 26 through 28. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, 
because your redemption draws near. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised Him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, Repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.